What do you think is going to happen with uh, with the real estate market with now wages look like they're starting to come down? The last few years, we had the great resignation. Everyone had a big burst in uh, income. People were making money in stocks and crypto. Everyone was making money everywhere. But now it seems like that easy money is fading away and uh, and people are trying to hold on to their jobs. You know, I think... Um and John, I mean, I, no one has a crystal ball, right? And I don't want to be right on some of the things that I say. I'm just trying to be smart because I'm a businessman. And, you know, part of my survival as a business or an entrepreneur is being prepared, trying to, you know, I don't, you know, some people, you talk to them, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I need to have six months of food in my house and a year full of water. I mean, trust me, if the, if, if the shit hits the fan, man, and you need six months of water in your house, they're coming looking for you at your house, right? Three days in, they're going to be like, Dude, they're still alive and they're thriving over here. So I'm coming for you, right? So I'm not one of those, you know, um, conspiracy theorists or anything yeah. like that. But, um, you know, but when I'm looking at the practical side of the economy and, you know, we always rebound, but what people don't realize is the U.S. thrives and survives in ups and downs, booms and busts. If you look back, I actually uh, did a speaking engagement to a group of entrepreneurs and back in the 08 crisis. And I had researched the last 200 years where we call them panics, right? Depressions, recessions, pandemics. Mm -hmm. Go back 200 years, we had pandemics. And we looked at the booms and the busts, but the difference between now and back then is that it used to happen every two or three years or sometimes every year, right? But now it seems like the booms and the busts have gone to decade periods, right? Yeah. So we would have 10-year periods or 12-year periods before we would actually have recessionary times. And I think that really started, you know, back in like the 60s, 70s and things like that. So when, when we're looking at the market, I look at the data because I, the data, I think that some of the smartest people that I, that I follow and I've been able to make it for 30 some years as an entrepreneur is that it, we would be unwise if we didn't take a step back. I think, you know, we want to run, 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 run. But if we don't take the time to step back and look at the history books and realize that in some way, no, it's not the exact, but the fingerprint or the, the footprint or the, the you know, w whatever, there are resemblances, right? And I, so I think that the, the devil's in the details. So we got to look at those details. And I think that we are going to see some type of crash in the housing industry. And I think that the reason is because we have to. Mm -hmm. There has to be some kind of reset. Call it a correction. Yeah. Right? Now, it can happen in two different forms. And what we've been seeing happen happening is more of like a stagflation, right? Where prices continue to go up, but demand drops off. That's stagflation. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that we're seeing it in the housing industry right now. And- but it can go one of two ways. And I said this, you know, again, I don't want to be right, but I did say this on a podcast months ago, six months ago, where two things would happen, either home prices because it shot up 40% in two years. So we're either going to see a leveling off for a very long period of time, maybe a decade, where we don't see major, major appreciation. We're seeing it now because of a lot of false narratives. And so, um, and propping, things being propped up. But I think that what we may see is a crash. Yeah. And and I think that's more probable. But think we've got presidential election year, 2024. Um, nobody wants to see foreclosures. That's why FHA and VA have these, you know, low modification programs to keep people in their house, even though they're not paying um, or they're in default. And we know that we're going to 40-year mortgages, mm -hmm. right, that are with FHA and VA, 40-year mortgages. And I don't know if you know this, but the new modification that Biden signed into uh, into act in January, and people don't realize this, man. If if borrowers are in default and over a million homeowners have taken advantage of a loan modification since the pandemic, over a million. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we seeing foreclosures? Well, that would be a good reason, yeah. right? But now what they're doing, John, is they're taking up to 30% of their loan balance if they're in default. Well, let's just say they owe $300,000 
On their loan. On their loan. Right? So they owe a I'll take $9,000 of that. Not, I'm sorry, $90,000 of that, right? $90,000. They recast that into a second mortgage at 0% interest and no payments due until the end of 30 years or 40 years, right? So you mm-hmm. suck that 90000 off your $300,000 loan. That's a boost, man. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Hey, man, take. I want 30% taken off my mortgage and put in the backside. Doesn't affect me on my monthly payments, right? The only time that money's due is when you pay it off your last payment or it's interest-free or you sell your home. So now they're not only going to take 30%, $300,000 loan, they're going to take 90 grand of it, put it on the back end, interest-free, zero payments. But now they're going to cast that loan into a 40-year Mortgage. So there's a noose around the neck of property owners. Well, the government's becoming a landlord, in my opinion. Oh, they had 100%. You're renting. Yep. You're renting your home. 